All right, guys, here's the new topic of the week. My old Craftsman lawnmower. I just let it sit out for the last few years. I don't put it in the garage. I don't put it in the shed. And uh, it doesn't want to start. So I decided to make it electric. Uh, I really had all the parts I needed on hand to do this. The only thing I had to do, I went to Home Depot and I bought a, a piece of C-channel. It's like one inch C-channel. It was four feet long. I think it was like 12 or $13. So I bought that C-channel, I cut two 11 inch pieces, I welded it to the bottom, and I mounted a motor in here with uh, I think two eight millimeter screws. And then I took the blade off of uh, the actual motor and I welded it right onto the electric motor. So that's what we got here. And I sharpened it up, you can see it's nice and sharp because I wanted it to cut good. So I put it in the angle grinder downstairs, sharpened it up, uh, this thing's all old and rusty. You can see where I uh, tech screwed the controller in through the, the top. And I took the controller out of the uh, Vector Light Bike. It's a 52 volt controller uh, and you can run it on 36 volts or 48 volts or 52 volts. So pretty convenient. But uh, I'm about to turn it on for the first time and I'm hoping it works. I'm hoping it spins in the correct direction, so it has to spin this way. Let's find out. I'm not really sure. All right, so here's the top of the beast. Here's the motor. I can just spin it by hand, and you can see the blade moving down there. It's like uh, similar to an LR small block motor, but it was purchased on eBay. I think it was $69.99, free shipping. And it had like a... A plastic cooling fin here and it had a shroud covering it but I took all that off because I don't really care but it mounted in there pretty easily you can see my weld marks coming through surprised I didn't blast through it because I'm pretty bad at welding but it worked out pretty good there's the controller to 3077 MOSFET 63 volt got an XT60 Anderson connector and I actually have a half twist throttle and I got a cruise control. So I'll be able to set the speed and then hold the, the cruise control to set it on. But I am gonna need some sort of a safety device. So right now I have the on off switch just spliced through. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, a safety bar up here so that you have to pull it down and when it springs back, it shuts off. So that's the next step. But I just wanna see if this thing works. I have no idea if it works. I tried it with uh, a 72 volt Kelly controller that I think I bought bricked from the factory. And again, it did not work with this motor. I haven't had it pair with any motor. I even plugged it into the Kelly setup with my computer. I had my laptop out here trying to program it, trying to identify the motor and when you identify the motor and reset it, it'll cog for two seconds. So the motor does spin, so you know the motor's working, and then it just doesn't do anything after that. So the Kelly controller's bricked. So I took out this trusty controller because I know it works, and uh, I hooked it up all color for color on the phases and the halls. So let's plug in a battery over here. I have a 12 cell, 12 amp hour multi-star pack, and it has plenty of juice. So let's plug the thing in and see what happens. Right. I hope this thing spins in the right direction. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use that reversal, the motor reversal chart from Endless Sphere. Oh, this is hard to do with one hand. This thing looks quite dangerous, right up my alley. And the throttle is just hanging here because obviously I can't put it on these bars because it's not the size of a handlebar from a bike. So I'm going to have to figure that out too. I have to mount this somehow. But let's twist the throttle and see if the blade spins. Oh my God, it's working. And it's spinning, it's spinning the blade clockwise to the right. Oh yeah, my welding skills are spot on. It's slightly wobbling. It's not too bad though. Oh my God, that's scary. All right, so let me see if I have it spinning the correct direction. I want to flip it over and make sure that the sharp part of the blade is going clockwise. Let's see here. 
Yeah, just like I thought, the blade is spinning backwards. So we need it to spin the other direction to cut the grass. So I'm gonna have to use the motor reversal chart on Endless Sphere and uh, switch two hauls and two phases to get it to spin in the other direction. So let's try to get that done and I'll cut the video back in when we have progress. Oh my God, that took like at least a half an hour. So the Endless Sphere motor reversal chart did not work with this controller but I figured it out eventually. I got like five combinations that worked, but it was really rough and you can tell that it wasn't running properly because a brushless motor should be nice, nice and smooth, especially when there's no load on it. So I ended up going, switching my greens and yellows on my phases and switching my blue and green on my hauls. And that got it working perfectly. Let's see if I can twist the throttle here while I'm holding the camera. All right, nice and smooth, spinning in the right direction. Oh man, we're ready to go cut some grass, baby. And this thing actually has regen right now. So when I let off the throttle, it like, it tries to charge the battery. It's so hilarious. I got regen on my lawnmower. You see it like breaks? That is hilarious. That's this little uh, white jumper right here. So I, I don't even know if that's even useful. It's probably just gonna, I don't even know if I'll leave it there or not. All right, but now I just gotta see if it cuts some grass. So I spent $12 to do this conversion and all these parts I had. So figure the motor's at 69 bucks. Uh, these LiPos are probably worth about a buck 20 and this controller is probably worth a hundred bucks. So I mean, $300 set up and you got yourself an electric lawnmower. Not too bad. Only took me, I don't know, probably about three hours to get the thing completed. The first day I welded the motor into place and I tried a couple controllers, but the controllers that I had kicking around weren't working. So I knew this controller was gonna work with this motor, but I had to pull it out of my Vector light bike over there. So unfortunately I had to sacrifice that bike, but what I'm gonna do is get that bike running on 72 volts soon. So I'm gonna need a bigger controller anyway, because I have a brand new 40T Samsung pack that I'm gonna throw in there. 20 cell 4p so i need to get a 72 volt controller for that all right so i looked through my pile of switches and i found a momentary on off switch so it's going to be perfect so while it's in the regular position the controller is on and when the button is pushed it'll shut down the controller and it's going to work out mint because i have this existing little piece of metal right here and i'm just gonna unibit a hole and mount it up in here so when the lever opens up, it's gonna shut off the controller. It'll work out perfect. Let me just drill it into it right now. I got my Milwaukee M18 drill and a unibit. So let's uh, make a hole. The switch is installed. Thing's a thing of beauty. When the handle opens, it shuts down the switch. So now I just need to put some sort of a spring on here. There's a spot for a spring right here. And then uh, we'll be good to go. We gotta wire it down to the controller. And this is the safest thing I've ever built. All right, I just stole a rusty old spring off of another lawnmower I had kicking in the back. And I had to spread it apart because it was a little too toitch. But now it is working. And that is our safety feature so we don't get killed. Ooh, I found this random twisted pair of wire and it's gonna work out perfectly. So I'll wire it into the controller and the kill switch and get this thing running. All right, it is ready for the official test ride. I used a piece of garden hose to hold down the battery pack real quick, teched it in. All right, if you can't tell that my lawn is completely overgrown, some of it's almost two feet tall. So this motor might struggle a little bit, but uh, let's see if it can do it. I gotta go full throttle and then hold the cruise control button. doesn't seem to be sharp enough it's cutting it and it's not bogging down too bad 
Tempted to cut the grass in some spots because you can see I made a couple passes over here but it's not really cutting it good enough it's very sloppy might need more power this is a 12 cell pack I can go up to 15 cell on this and it uh, this controller also takes a three speed switch so it's only on speed two right now because there's no switch in it so i could max it out onto speed three that might help but uh take one is a partial success i would say i'll soak it up to that all right so i spliced the black and the green wire together to put it in speed three and it was cutting pretty good. It was a lot better than it was. And then uh, I just broke a mount on my uh, motor mount. One of the welds came off. So I'm gonna have to call the project for today and re-weld it on there. But uh, which one is it? I think it's this one right here. Yeah, you can see it. Breaking loose. So I'm gonna have to tack the welds on a little bit better. Cause it started like wobbling around and warping. And I was like, that doesn't seem right. Back to the drawing board. All right, so I upgraded to a 13 cell 48 volt pack. And I used a couple of these fishing pole holders off of a chair to mount the throttle and the cruise control. So everything's working good now. I pull down the bar. I can lock on the throttle and I can put on the cruise control, but I need another hand right now. So uh, we have a lot more ampacity. I think this is a 48 volt 13 cell, like um, 15 amp hour pack. So it should be pretty good. Let's see if it'll cut the grass. It seems to be working pretty good. You can see the grass is uh, about a foot tall right here, or the weeds rather. And I cut all of these ones down from the fence line and it trimmed them all down. At one point, my cruise control shut off. Not really sure why the light was blinking on it and I had to unplug the battery and plug it back in. But uh, first tests look like a success. I'm gonna have to keep trying a little bit and see what happens. The controller is not even warm and the motor is warm to the touch. It's not hot. I could leave my hand on it. So let's keep going and uh, finish this fence line and see what happens. <laughs> 